All right, so we have a number of biochemistry assignments this week. A couple of them are bonus, so you don't need to do them, but they're worth extra credit. I also split up assignment lecture two into two parts. Uh, it makes it easier to get 100% of your repeating the uh, assignment over and over again. So anyway, I thought I'd make a video where I just kind of go through and do all the questions. Um, I'm going to skip assignment lecture one because uh, it's one question and there's only four possible choices. But assignment lecture one bonus uh, is really the same assignment, just kind of expanded. So I'll start with that one. So we're going to begin. So... This question is identifying chemical structures of macromolecules. Uh, I made like an info box here. I put it at the top so you can see the answers along with the molecule easier. <clears throat> All right. So taking a look at this molecule, we can automatically see that there are nitrogens. And if you read the entire guide up here is that proteins have nitrogens and nucleic acids have nitrogens. So it makes me lean towards it's one of those two. I do, I mean, we have two carbonyl groups, but I do not see any carboxyl groups. That's one carbon with two oxygens attached to it, so it doesn't make me think protein. Uh, though this is kind of a peptide bond. These are peptide bonds, essentially. Uh, but it is a ring, and it is a ring with um, rings containing carbon and nitrogen. And that its characteristic uh, is a pyrimidine here. Also, if you know your nucleic acids, you could probably be tipped off by the word uracil. All right, so let's do the next question here. Ooh, this is a long molecule. As one carboxyl at the end, there are no nitrogens. So since there's no nitrogens, we can immediately rule out nucleic acid and protein. It has to be a lipid or a carbohydrate. There are 18 carbons and two oxygens. So that's my, this is something we'll talk about later in the course, but my carbon to oxygen plus nitrogen ratio is nine. And that is quite high. Uh, when that number is higher than two, you can almost assume it's a lipid, unless it's like a specialty protein. So that one is a lipid. Okay, here we have a ring with nitrogens in it. We have nitrogens, so... Tips us off. We're going to ignore the phosphate. This looks very much like a sugar, and it is. Ribose is a sugar on its own. But it's attached to a ring with carbons and nitrogens in it. Uh, this is thymine monophosphate. So this is a nucleic acid again. Here we have alcysis. Um, carbon ratio is 1.6, so it's probably not a lipid. Uh, I see amino groups, so nucleic acids and proteins are involved. There's no ring. So since there's no rings, it's not a nucleic acid. Um, I see sulfur. That should tip us off for proteins. Uh, there's a carboxyl group, also a key part of proteins. I see some peptide bonds. Maybe I should turn on my diagram. So, so here is a peptide bond. Here is a peptide bond. There's an amino acid terminal. That's valine, cysteine, cysteine. This is a protein. And that is that assignment. So double check, make sure I got everything right. Green check. Green check. Okay. Let's do another assignment. So we're moving on to assignment lecture two, chapter two. A buffer solution contains ethenionic acid and its conjugate base. The, the pKa of ethenionic acid is 4.74. At which of the following pH values is the solution an effective buffer? Well, if you recall, the rule is buffer range is equal to the pKa. Let's see if I can get this. Plus or minus 1. All right. So this one's going to be an effective buffer between 3.74 and 5.74, right? Because that's just plus or minus one. So is 2.74 in that range? It is not. Is three in that range? No. Is five? 
Yes. Six in that range, no. Seven in that range, no. So the correct answer here is five. All right. So when we work, talk about am amine groups or amino groups, uh, what form is the chemical group in it? When we are at a pH value more th than two units below the pKa. Remember, if the pH is less than the pKa, then we are in the eesh, acid form HA or HA plus, right? So alternatively, if the pH is greater than the pKa, then we are in the base form, which is A minus or A. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, NH2 uh, switches from NH2 to back and forth with NH3 plus, right? And if you recall, uh, this would be the base form, and then this would be the the uh, the base, the A minus form, and then this would be the uh, sorry, this would be the base conjugate base form, which is the H A form, which is a little bit backwards because we think of losing protons, but with amino groups we actually gain a proton. So I've written these kind of backwards. Um, in fact, we are going to be in the H plus form, which would be NH three plus. Okay, so now we have to translate that into the answer to the question. What's its charge going to be? It's going to be a positive charge. And how many hydrogens is it going to have? It's going to have three hydrogens. So that's how you do that question. Succinic acid and its conjugate base, succinate, is an intermediate in the citric acid cycle. It can act as a single molecule or vector of the cellular metabolic state. It doesn't really matter for this, but we know it is diprotic with pKa values of 4.2 and 6.7. Uh, as three possible protonate states in the choices below. All right, so remember, as we lose protons, we lose protons as we go up in pH, So, and we gain negative charge. So this one would be at the highest pH. So we start off with a neutral charge, and then we go through pH 4.2, and then we have a minus one charge. Maybe better with the diagram. I typed it out anyway. And then we cross pH 5.6, and then we have a minus two charge, right? So, so the CH2 CO2 2 minus is only above pH 5.6, which is where we're at. So since we're at pH 7.5, that means we're on this side here. We're at the minus 2 level. So our answer to this question is that choice right there. Okay. All right, next question. Carbonic acid. So it's the same question. Uh, I have diprotic, tetraprotic, triprotic questions. Carbonic acid. As pKa values is 6.35, 10.33. Um, remember, as we go up in pH, so more. last time I drew an arrow going up, now my arrow points down. As we go up in pH, we lose uh, hydrogens and gain negative charge. Or in the opposite barrier, we gain hydrogens and add a positive charge. So the most positive one here and the most negative one here. <clears throat> so at seven and a half, we're in between these two values. So even if you don't know which direction you're going, this one's easy because you select the one in the middle. So maybe I'll be explicit and type it out. So, so we're at H2CO3. Then we cross 6.35 pH. Then we move to HCO3 minus. And then we cross 10.33. And if you're above pH 10.33, you're on CO3, 2 minus. That makes sense. Uh, and then we, again, to repeat, we are right in the middle between 6.3 and 
to the answer here. So these these questions do not involve any calculations. It's more about sorting of information. All right, so again here, same question, but expanded now three PKA values. Uh, this one is the most positive. This one's the most negative. Um, our this is a little weird, but our hydrogens are here. This one has two hydrogens, one hydrogen, zero hydrogens. So as we go up in pH, we go in this direction. Right, so uh, we're at the highest pH. 14 is way higher than 6. Um, so we're definitely in the most negative condition. Uh, these questions get a little bit more challenging when you're kind of following in the region. But so... You know, I'll just write out, if the pH is 2, then we're in the neutral state. If the pH falls between 3 and 4, so it's like 3.1 and 4, say it's P, then we're in the minus 1 state. If the pH is between 4.76 and 6.39, it's like 5 or 6. Uh, then we're in the minus 2 state. But if the pH is, is greater than 7, in this case it's well above 7, then we are in the minus 3 state. All right, so the last question, pyrophosphoric acid is a tetraprotic. There's only a couple of molecules that are falling into the tetraprotic uh, range in this, within a reasonable band. I mean, obviously, we're going down all the way to pH 0.9. Uh, so it has three pKa values. Therefore, it has five different protonation states. We are at pH 11 and a half, which means we're at the most negative state. So sometimes it's not always as interesting to be that high, but that's where we're at. So it's, we're, we're looking for the most minus, least hydrogens, most minus, least high H. Oh, I can't write, sorry. Maybe that's why I type sometimes. Um, So the most negative and has the least hydrogens here, right? And so as pH goes up, we are going down. Uh, for the most part, these questions are sorted in one direction or the other. There, it could go down or it could go up. It's one of the two. I try and I try and sort these alphabetically or something similar. <clears throat> anyway, so that is the answer to this one. Uh, if you get a more nuanced one, like say, well, what is it at pH five? Where are we? so we're at pH five. Well, that's the middle one because it's in between. Uh, if your pH is 0, you're here. If your pH is 1, you're here. If your pH is 3, 4, 5, 6, you're here. If your pH is 7, 8, 9, you're here. If your pH is 10, 11, 12, 13, you're here. All right, so let's submit and make sure I got them all correctly. Be a pretty bad video if I did miss them. I did write these questions. Uh, all right, so now let's move on to chapter three where we talk more about amino acids. Uh, let me go back here. Uh, chirality, chemical structures, and their properties. And again, like I said to students in class, you are required to know all your amino acid structures. All right, so which one of the following amino acids is represented by the chemical structure shown above? All right, so our choices are arginine. I know that one's... Uh, I guess maybe the first step is to figure out the side chain. So here's the backbone, right? Carboxyl, amino, we can just ignore all that. Proline's a little bit more challenging. Um, so here, the part we're interested in is the side chain here. I'm coloring in red. So if this is our alpha carbon, beta, alpha, beta, gamma, <clears throat> um, delta, I guess, or is that one delta or gamma? <laughs> I guess we call it a beta methyl. All right. Sorry about that. Anyway, so my knowledge of this is um, this one has what's the best way to say it is a branch chain amino acid, right? So it's not arginine. Arginine has a positive side chain as well as lysine. Methionine has a sulfur in the middle. Phenylalanine has two rings. Um, so just kind of my general knowledge of structures, I can break it down into one of these three. 
Valine, I know, ends in a V. So it's a alpha carbon and then beta splits off like that. So this one's a little bit longer than a valine. It's like a valine with this extra carbon here. Um, I also know that leucine ends in a in a V, but it's a longer V. So this is leucine. This is valine. But this is like an isomer of leucine, which I hope tips it off. Oh, this one is isoleucine. All right, next one. Which one of the following amino acids is represented by the chemical structure shown above? So again, eliminate the backbone. Just uh, this is the backbone here. Remember amino and carboxyl, just ignore that part. So we're focusing on this part here. Well, I remember serine, serine on our list of choices. Of course it's not, um, is here. That's serine, but this is like a serine with an extra methyl group. Now, asparagine has a nitrogen on the side chain. Aspartic acid and glutamic acid have carboxyl groups. Glutamine is like asparagine has a, a amino substitute carboxyl. This one's just a hydroxyl. Proline does that weird thing where it goes back and binds the backbone. Valine does not have a hydroxyl on the side chain, so our answer is threonine here. Threonine is serine with an extra uh, methyl group on the side. So. All right, uh, I found that just kind of looking over stu the few students that actually did their homework, uh, they did better on these types of questions where they had multiple choice here. So yeah, my choices are glutamic acid, threonine, glutamine, and proline. Okay, so on this one here, you can see the backbones on the right, and then I have a long carboxyl chain, which is glutamic acid. Here, um, okay, when you look at these two, right? So this one has carboxyl at the end. This one has an amine substituted carboxyl, is what I call it. So this one is glutamine, right? So glutamic acid is carboxyl. Glutamine has an amine instead of a carboxyl. And then the last one we have, this one doesn't even look like an amino acid, right? It doesn't have an amino group by itself. And that's because it's proline. Proline D, sorry. Proline is D. Yeah, so that's proline. It kind of comes... So here's the side chain. Let's draw it out for you. Here's our alpha carbon, because that's the carboxyl. Here's our amine. And what happens is the side chain comes off and then it comes back and binds the amine again. So if you cut this bond here, it would look more like a normal amino acid, but that's proline for you. Boom, boom. All right. And then we have this one is our last one is a threonine, which we briefly did on the other page, right? So threonine is B. It's uh, again, here's our backbone. Here is our hydroxyl, and then it's got an extra methyl on it compared to serine. Which one of the following amino acids can corresponds to a nonpolar branch chain amino acid? Branch chain amino acid, we talked about those in class. Uh, if you remember your BCAAs, that's valine, isoleucine, and leucine. So if you remember your branch chain amino acids, you got the answer. Uh, has the shortest hydrophobic side chain. Now, tryptophan giant serine has a hydroxyl it's not hydrophobic glutamate um is a conjugate base of glut glutamic acid so it's charge it's a charge negatively charged side chain asparagine is a mean substitute it's also very polar now alanine has the shortest hydrophobic side chain but it's not branched so so valine is the best choice here because alanine is not branched. So that's a key, key word to pick up there. <clears throat> All right. Uh, nonpolar branched chain amino acid with a double methylated gamma carbon. All right. So let's let's plot that out. So here's our alpha carbon. Then we have our beta carbon. Then we have our gamma carbon. Right. And then it's branched into two methyl groups. Now, if you remember talking about earlier, valine is a double branched beta carbon. So that's, this is valine. And uh, leucine would be if I took this, one of these methyls and moved it to the beta. Uh, but this is leucine, right? So 
it's a branch chain, so it has to be leucine, isoleucine, or valine, and valine's not a choice, so that makes uh, leucine the best choice here. All right, so which one of the following is the naturally occurring amino acid? I always find it it's the most challenging when uh, I had, you get the hydrogen on the top, right? Because we're supposed to be, if this is an eyeball here, we're supposed to be looking down this direction. And so you really, I really have to use my spatial reasoning here. So this is our R. All right, so if I'm looking down this way, um, a clock is going to turn this way. So I have CO. So I have C O N R. So that's not right. So again, if I'm looking down this way, this is supposed to be an eyeball with you know, eyelashes or something. Um, so I'll start here. I'm going to C O R N corn. So. So that is our correct choice. Based on the chemical properties of amino acid side chains, which pair of amino acids is both form an ionic bond. Again, if you go look up in the textbook, uh, negative amino acids include uh, glutamic acid, spar aspartic acid, uh, histidine. No, that's positively charged, excuse me. I think those are the only two, and then the positive ones are lysine, arginine, and histidine. So, so isoleucine is hydrophobic, histidine is positive. Glutam glutamate, negative, histidine, positive. That's a good answer. Valine, hydrophobic, glutamate, negative. No, threonine, hydrophilic, alanine, uh, hydrophobic. Cysteine, sulfur, tryptophan, large. Uh, so the answer, correct answer here is glutamate and histidine. All right, the last one. I think this gives students uh, some confusion. Um, but I want you to just kind of pull on the last part. Your answer will consist of only two letters, no spaces or other. I had one student write NH. Sorry. I had one student write NH3+. plus. Right? No, that's got punctuation. A plus is a punctuation. Three is a number. So NH might be a valid answer, but that's not the case. That's not, you're talking amino acid students. Another student write amino acid, which was not correct either. Your job is to sequence this peptide. All right. And I, I try to do my best here to help you out. My students actually ended up loving this question last year. Get that. Okay. Uh, so it, it tells, gives you a bunch of tips here. First, consult an amino acid guy for reference. So I've I've created a sheet here you can look at you can download the PDF. Uh this is actually useful the other questions too. Um it'll help us with the side chains. Okay. Two, identify the amino terminal and NH3+. It's a nice circle there. One peptide the one peptide bond connecting the two amino acids is also highlighted in green. So that'll be helpful. Uh and examine the side chain for each of the two acids. Once you've identified the single letter code for each side chain, put it in the blank. Okay. So let's break this down. Okay, so here is our amino group. So, and then here is our alpha carbon. And then, boop, we have a peptide bond. And then we have another alpha carbon. Now, this is really long. Uh, so this is our carboxyl group end here. Our COOH. Right, this is our COOH, then amino group. So it goes, it goes N, C alpha, C O, N, C alpha. This is the backbone of a of a protein. And if you have to keep going. Um, and then these are these uh CO to N is our peptide bond. So first is find the backbone. Uh and then you can kind of ignore the background. I'm gonna use white. Just kind of jiggle it out here. We're not interested in the backbone. We want to identify the side chains. Okay. All right, so let me circle the side chains. Use um bright green. I don't know. So here is side chain one. One. How do I know it's one? Because it's right next to the amino. We always start at the amino. Start there. Uh, and then here would be the second amino acid starting right here. Uh, and then here is the side chain for two. 
All right. Uh, we identify the the one on the right. It's a branch chain amino acid. It's got a branch chain, right? Uh, remember, leucine ends in the V. The other one that doesn't end in a V is isoleucine. So this one's isoleucine, which has the letter I. Okay. Uh, if you want to consult your help sheet, you can do that too. Um, isoleucine right there. Right, isoleucine I. Okay. All right, so now let's look at amino acid number two. Now, um, this ends in a carboxyl. And which, it's, so here's the alpha, this is the beta, gamma, delta. So the delta carbon has the carboxyl, is the carboxyl, sorry. The gamma has the carboxyl. Uh, so it's going to be aspart aspartic acid or glut glutamic acid. Aspartic acid or glutamic acid. So here, just looking at our glutamic acid, this is alpha, beta, and then uh, gamma has the carboxyl. This one's alpha, beta, gamma, and this one's delta is the carboxyl, right? So we have glutamic acid, and, which has the letter E. So let's go back here. Um, so our second one is glutamic acid and it has the letter e so remember isoleucine is first then um glutamic acid is second so i'm going to write on the blank i e and that's my answer internet explorer for those microsoft fans out there um so let's double check make sure everything's good isoleucine greening Glutamic acid, glutamine, threonine, proline, valine, leucine. We got the correct naturally occurring amino acid, glutamate and histidine, and the correct answer was IE. IE. All right, last problem here. The Wordle bonus. Like I said, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with the New York Times bought this Wordle game, the daily like guess the um <clears throat> guess the five letter word so i kind of took that approach uh but we're guessing a five letter amino acid word so uh same thing same thing as last question right so we're going to start with our amino and then c alpha and then c uh, it's carboxyl where it looks to another amino c alpha co right and we're going to need to do this five amino acids long right so, so we end in a coh we start with an nh3 plus or an nh2 i may get a plus in this case Oop. Uh, so we're looking for kind of that pattern as our backbone and so what i'm going to do is i'm just kind of go through and circle the side chains as i like to do okay so here is uh, I'm gonna. I know. I number the C alphas. So maybe that may that be the way. Let's go with a dark red. That was fun. Okay. So so N C alpha carboxyl. N C alpha number two carboxyl. N C alpha number three carboxyl. N C alpha number four carboxyl. N C alpha number five. No, not that way. Oh, that way. Carboxyl. So that's the end. And that's the start. So now that I've kind of followed my backbone along, you remember, go through the green lines. That's the tip. Um, the next, because it's not always circular. It can it can go kind of every, any which way it wants. Next, I'm going to do is I'm going to circle the side chains. All right. So here is the side chain for number one. So here is the side chain for number two. Here is the side chain for number three. Here is the side chain for number four. And then here is the side chain for number five. So that makes sense. Usually students will say yes at this point. Now we need to identify the sequence. Well, this one's got nothing there. If you remember, nothing there is glycine or G. This one is a very large one. This is arginine, 
which uses this R remember pirates. Oops. Whatever. Can be registered trademark. Uh this one is just a methyl group, which is alanine, which is just A. This one is a remember it's a split at the beta carbon. So it's the shorter one, valine. The a longer one would be a uh, leucine. And this one looks like phenylalanine, but it has an extra OH group. And that one is tyrosine, which is Y. So now I take the single letter code G, and I write it in order, R, A, V, Y. Gravy. So anytime you sequence one of these things, it should come out with a word. It's just actually one of the Wordle questions. One of the answers to one of the Wordle things, so... So the correct sequence of letters will be a five-letter English word. The word is also an answer for the New York Times Wordle. So our answer is gravy. Gravy. So if you get something that doesn't make sense, um, like zyter, that's not a real word. Or you can go check the dictionary. Um, that will not be one of the answers because it is not a real word. But gravy is a real word. You're into that. Um, biscuits and gravy type of thing. Uh, it is an answer. So, uh, so here is my answer. Gravy. And I got it correct. So I got one bonus point. Uh, this is worth one point out of zero. Because, uh, again, it is a bonus point. So Anyway, so that is the homework for this week. Because uh, because we do have a quiz on class on Wednesday, which I'll be posting soon. Uh, make sure you keep up with your homework. Thanks.